Okay, so what do we have here? Let's start uh, this. Hello, everybody. So what do we get here is a small demo that I did. <coughs> Sorry, a small demo that I did. It is called Riding a Beam of Light. Uh, it is made with 3GS through jQuery. And there is a motto, move your mouse over the spaceship or not enjoy the ride. Move the mouse over the spaceship. What does this mean? So the spaceship is a little blue stuff. You move the mouse on the spaceship. Uh, the Minecraft characters, it looked like it's taking a ride. So this was a kind of joke. Uh, so I did this little demo in three hours of card, and uh, I'm going to explain to you right now how to do that. And uh, the number of line is like uh, 80 line or 100 line, I don't know exactly. And uh, this is why I can write that in three hours, obviously. So. Uh, we got the Minecraft character here, all the code is available on, the, on GitHub as usual, Jérôme Etienne, Demo Riding Light, and uh, you got the old stuff here, everything is cool. Okay, mighty actions on all. Alors, so, we got here a text editor that I'm gonna use uh, to show you the card. You got in, here's the sound, here's the vendor, so the sound is basically the sound that you see when I move. Uh, this is a kind of laser beam sound. This is here, all the sound, here's the vendor with uh, 3GS post processing, and here's the assets. Alright, the T query, blah blah blah. Okay, let's focus. The sound out. What, do you, what is here is the most important file, the index.html. And uh, this is uh, the application that you see right now on the screen. So first, let's describe what is on the screen right now. You got various parts of this um, scene that you see here. You got the sky map. You see the cloud in the back, the kind of yellow cloud. Here you got the sun as well in the sky map. You got that all over the place, 360. So, this is what we call a sky map. You got this sky map, we're gonna come back later on the data and on how to cut it, what is it, and stuff like that. After that, you got the laser beam here, so the kind of laser that you see with the kind of spaceship, the blue spaceship on which a Minecraft character is sitting on. So, you got this. So, the second part is the laser beam with the spaceship. You will see that inside the code, I call that the lightsaber. Why do I call that the lightsaber? Is because when I coded that, I was thinking to Star Wars lightsaber. So this is a lightsaber. <laughs> All right. So on, on top of this lightsaber, what do we got? We got a Minecraft characters with a kind of position which make you think he's riding. So he's riding the spaceship of the lightsaber. Uh, this is Minecraft characters. Uh, what else do we got? Oh yeah, we got the post processing. Post processing is something in which that you don't do directly in the 3D. You do that on the 2D uh, on the screen once the 3D has been rendered. To it. So you don't do actual 3D with uh, perspective on stuff. Uh, okay, so for example, which kind of post effect we got here? We got the fact that you yeah, there is a trail when I move. You see, everything's become blurry when I move. This is due to one post effect, which is called motion blur. When you move, it is blurry, motion blur. Uh, after that, what do we got? You got the vignette here. As you can see, the corner on uh, the corner of my screen are a bit darker than the center. This is called the vignette effect. Uh, and there is some post-processing as well on the color to look all, out, all those more, all more uh, psychedelic kind of stuff. Because he got some funky glasses, with funky 3D glasses. So you need funky colors. Okay, so this was the post-processing. Now there is another aspect, which is the sound. You see, the more I move, the more the sound is loud. So we did to handle that. 
when you move, you produce a sound according to how much you move. And this sound is the, is the same as you got in Minecraft, not in Minecraft, in Star Wars. In Star Wars, with the laser beam, when they fight or lose hands, or oh yeah, you are my father. Ah! All right. So uh, you got the sound. So the sky map, the laser beam, the Minecraft characters, the past effect, and the sound. Those are the part of this demo. Let's see how to code that now. We got the index HTML with an editor. So you start the HTML page, blah, blah, you put a title. Here you got quite a buff of script to include. Most of them are very short, and uh, I admit that this long legal script is ugly. We have to remove that. Uh, good things for it is because there is required JS inclusion now in uh, jQuery, and the fact to have required JS means that all that you don't have to include. This is all done automatically by required JS. This is really cool, and uh, he's doing some optimization, very cool tools, efficient. Um, what else? So, all this long line will be removed. And uh, don't be scared, by the way, most of them are very short, like 20 lines, 30 lines, no more. It is uh, just because they are not concatenated together. <laughs> so, we have all the script with all the little plugins that we use. After that, we start the body of the HTML page. And the first thing on the body is what we call the info div, the page title. So the page title is this. You see this little riding a beam of light, so the title, some technical aspects, which is yes, the query on the motto, move your mouse so over the spaceship to enjoy the ride. So you move the mouse so and enjoy the ride. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh riding baby, baby. Okay, so this is a div ID. You got here all basic normal stuff with uh, HTML stuff, right? So BR, RR, BR, e, all that. Now we start the um, JavaScript in itself. This is interesting. Is first we line, we start at line 36 and we end up at uh, 120 something like that. So there is like 80 uh, 80 lines. It's pretty short. I mean, 80 lines, that, it's pretty short. It's cool. You got the sound effect, you got the motion blur, everything. So, let's start now. When do we do the JavaScript? The first stage is to do the init, the, the world init. So, we do jQuery create world in order to create a jQuery world. We add the boilerplate to the jQuery world. We add the page title to this um, boilerplate. So you see page title, here your CSS selector for the page title. This div ID info here, this is the CSS selector that you see here. So we have this jQuery world and we start it. So when we start it, we have the rendering loop starting and you start to render your world. You start to render your world with the renderer, 3GS renderer, you start to do that with a scene. Uh, what we call a scene graph, that means all the 3D objects that describe the scene. You do that with a camera on a camera controller. All that is this line, you do all that. So you are ready to go just after the first line, which is pretty cool. Here we do some cosmetics specific to this demo. I will put the camera to minus three magic number because it looked cool when I tried. <laughs> Up to you to find your magic numbers, guys. Okay, so this part will really need the sky map. So the sky map is what we got here, the background with the yellow. The clouds, stuff like that. Let's look at what is the sky map. Oh, and basically, you see, now you can increase the size of the, of the inspector as well. This is pretty good when you do screencast. Paul, if you hear me, thanks. Okay, so here, what do we got? We got Chrome, the network tab, and we have all the image. That's gonna, that's our use for, that's our use. Download it by this page. So, what is this PX? It's a sky map. As you can see, you remember the sun that you see everywhere, the yellow sky on the gray at the bottom. See what you get here. You got the stuff, let's see, find the sun, the sun, the yellow, 
that's this image. Px is because the, Q, the sky map is in fact a very big cube on which you map six texture. This texture are mapped inside this very big cube and you are in the middle of this very big cube. Because all that is very, very big, you have the impression that it is the universe, the sky. So Px is for positive x for the face of this cube and x for the negative x, P, P, Y, and positive Y, and Y, and then, and, and so on. For this image, you can put whatever you want. It's pretty cool and pretty flexible. Okay, so this was a very basic talk on the cube map. We have that, we have defined what is a cube map. Now, what do we do? We initialize it with JavaScript. So, first stage is to uh, add the URL of this six image. These six images are located all over the place, not all over the place, <laughs> they are located in the disk in six different files. So you need to have some uh, URL for them. This is this line. tquery create q create URLs, you're gonna create a URL for tquery cube. And after that you got that here. So right here you create so tquery create cube texture, we use both URLs and we do a tQuery cube's texture. So in fact, that's a special texture which handle those six images for you, and uh, thus it is easy to handle. You got this texture cube here. With this texture cube, we do tQuery create sky map. So the sky map is this very big cube in which you are. Uh, create sky map only giving the texture cube. So we give the texture cube to this guy, we create the sky map, and we add this sky map to the world. When you are done, you got this very big sky map running on. So that's the first effect. The sky map. We got it here. In uh, four or five lines. Whoops. Nope. Better. So after that, the second effect is the saber. So as I said, this beam of light is in fact a saber for me, is because when I did this plugin, it was, I was thinking to Star Wars and uh, their lightsaber, you know, when they fight everything. So we got that, and uh, the sound that you hear as well is uh, something about this, is with the lightsaber, you move around and uh, you got the sound. So, first it is like the 3D for the saber. We do tQuery, create lightsaber, add to world. Pretty simple, so we create a tQuery like server and we add that to our world. That's it, so simple. <laughs> okay, server, after that we have to, we need to do some, um, how can I say, position. We're gonna put our posi position, our 3D light server inside the scene. So we do that by, by that, we put that a little below, translate Y, and after that, rotate Y. Oh, we got this, is, this light saber as we start. We start with something like that. So this is a little below on with a Y rotation. So facing us. We have the light saber on that ship. We have created the light saber on at two world. So simple. The Minecraft characters now. We, are, we need to put the Minecraft characters on top. So Minecraft characters is on the, in there. So we start here. First, new tQuery Minecraft characters. And here we put a URL for the skin of the Minecraft character. So this guy is a, is a weird guy with some uh, 3D glass. I like it, it's funny. And uh, so I put a skin for this guy. And this skin is, uh, what can I say? That's a normal Minecraft skin, right? You can do your own uh, or put that unchanged. That's a standard one. Okay, so we create the Minecraft characters with this skin, and after that we add the Minecraft characters to the 3D scene. But we attach that directly to the server object and not directly at the root of the scene. It, this way the Minecraft character is actually sitting on the, on the server itself. And we do the same as usual, some positioning this way is sitting on top of it, maybe the middle of it on the beach ball, we got that, here. All those dirty lines, what are they? <laughs> this is a lot of magic number here, why? Because this is the way I 
When I play with it, I believe that, oh yeah, we really got that, that, that. And I fight you, but no by end. No thing magic here, just play around and you will see how it goes. So what do we have? What do we have, we have the two legs are spread apart. The guy is sitting and we got some movement inside the arm. Thus, you have the impression that the guy is actually riding. So you go here. How do you do that? You access a part of your character model. Here I access the part of the, which is the leg left. After that, I say the leg right, arm right, arm left. You got it. So here you obtain something which is a 3GS object 3D on your apply rotation in the way that you like. Uh, that's what we have here. You apply rotation in the way that you like. And you got this position. A lot of magic number, but... Uh, well, I don't know how to make it shorter or cleaner. After that, what do we do? Here we change the material of the ult. So what is the ult? Ult of the lightsaber is in fact the spaceship of the beam of light. So we change the material of it in order, we want that to be blue. See, it's a kind of blue, and as you can see, it's reflecting the, the sky map. You see here the little, uh, the little aspect here, we feel like below, you see this gray, kind of gray stuff. You got here, you got a gray circle as well. So this spaceship is reflecting the sky map. How do you do that, this reflection? You create first the material for the reflection. Here you put the color for this material on here. This is the blue color that I put in order for it to look more spaceship. And after that, we set the environment map with texture cubes. That's the exact same texture cubes that you use in the TQA cube here. In the TQA texture cube here. And uh, we do that here for the sky map. And uh, we use the same texture here for the reflection of the material. We got our material, 3GS material on here. We set the, we set the material on the hilt part. You do server object today, hilt in materials, hilt out materials. Or you got the hilt with the new material. It's all cool. Uh, after that, so here we have just changed the material of the hilt. We're gonna do some post effects. So, post effect, like the vignette effect here. You can see the corner are a bit darker than the middle. Uh, you got some image, uh, so some color processing to increase contrast. And uh, the train, you see when I move everything is blurry, so that's a motion blur. Let's see how we do that. We create composer, we do tQuery create effect composer around the path, this is gonna return the composer. First thing is the bloom. Bloom is a special effect in which you increase the, the color, the color, the, yeah, increase the contrast of the color. You increase the contrast of the color, after that you do a motion blur, so you leave a trail where you pass and uh, everything will become blurry when you move. Uh, motion blur, you've got a vignette in which... Uh, vignette. To have corners like that, it looks pretty cool and um, it's pretty nice. So, uh, that's our first effect. That's at five line, and you got post effect. And in fact, this line is useless. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. After that, do we? What do we have? We have the sound, and the sound is uh, this thing that the more I move around the guy, the louder the sound will be. I got a lightsaber sound playing, and it will be louder if I move a lot. So here we got a lot of code to trying to discover the, how much you move. Uh, honestly, I'm not quite proud of his algorithm. If you find better, or for the good, tell me, and I will. We will see. And uh, so after that, you got the idea how fast you move. And according to the speed of your move, you go you go play three different sound: swing three, swing two, swing one, and. Uh, how do you play the sound? You play that with the audio element. So, document, get element by ID, dumb ID. So, this is there. Audio element, bye, 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 bye. Soon swing 1. 
Et Zoom screen 1 is the fact that you you're gonna select this element. Once you got this element, you do play and the sound will play. That's it. And we are over now. So 120 lines. You got 80 lines to do that. And uh, because it is only 80 lines, I coded that in three hours. I mean, I don't know, that seems pretty cool for three hours. If you ask me. So this is the end of this, um, let's say, how to screencast. And um, I don't know how this new format is um, supposed to work, but for sure it is quite easy for me to, to do that. I can almost improvise it, and uh, that will help me produce more content, I hope. I hope. So now that's over. Let's click.